things that are like one one hundredth of what I was supposed to be, you know, able to lift. And uh, the concept of kettlebells has been whoa, very different. Extremely yeah. different. Now, so the the reason that um, I mentioned that is for two reasons. Two reasons actually. Number one, you should expect to feel different from doing a different modality. In addition to, you should approach it a little different. So learning kettlebells, practicing kettlebells is usually for a different reason than you would for necessarily building muscle. So a lot of the times uh, people look at it and could you use it for building muscle? Sure, if it's the appropriate weight, etc. But second it, it, with that is getting stronger uses a, a overload principle, meaning you're consistently doing more weight, more reps, etc. Um, after a certain point, for a lot of people, the kettlebell isn't, you can't really go heavier, um, I, I would say with, with a, a few exceptions. So, um, but I'm going to go back to the swings, okay? So, we're going to go alternating swings this time. I'm going to show you two different ways on the swing, okay? Two here, get set up. So, I'm going to switch hand over hand, okay? Here we go. This is not my favorite. Notice the hand switch, and the bell doesn't turn. Now, I'm going to switch it. That's my favorite. I don't have to worry about my hands fitting on the kettlebell. Okay? So, for that, an alternating swing. Who said hi? Um, and so, for that, that's where I say it's a little bit different of um, a movement. And if you're like, oh, I could never do that, just, just start with a small bell. It takes some time, practice it. Uh, I'll definitely tell you uh, when we were practicing uh, the morning certification, I dropped it. So um, that's totally normal. Okay, up next, I'm going to show, hi Jody, um, I'm going to show you the bottom up kettlebell press. This is probably the king of the kettlebell shoulder press exercises. Okay, I have a couple ways to pick it up. I'm going to show you the more advanced. Number one, um, but you can basically just get it into a clean position and then press. So the bell bottom is upside down. I'll say the same number of reps and then I'll show you on the other side, right here. the bottoms up kettlebell. So that's a crazy exercise. A lot of people uh, don't necessarily need to get to that level, um, but it does require more forearms. And I do like it for tennis players and golfers. So that's a good idea there. All right, up to squats. Now, the reason I'm going to go over squats, everyone's done squats, but the reason I'm going to go over them is because of the, the, the progression, it's showing not necessarily the progression, but the various exercises of which the intensity changes. Okay? So first, let's go over this real quick. The kettlebell, front squat here, okay, elbows tight, pause, from the side, a little slower than that, that's better, okay, that's a great exercise and a foundational one, if you haven't mastered that, practice it, take your time, it's a great exercise. Then, let's talk about the progression, the next exercise. We line, um, and we're going to go over the single arm front squat. The reason this is different, holding it here, uh, nope, hold that, prevent it from happening. What I mean is, I'm bring it up, rack position, hold that to the side, keeping the elbow down, breathing. All right, so now I get to go and use one side of my body very different than the other, okay? Shaking the side. Okay, very different uh, as far as the kettlebells are concerned. So, and the, the response for the body. So, the question is can you do the same weight as you normally would? No. Are you using the same amount of muscles? I'd argue you're probably using more in a different pattern, right? So, if I'm holding something heavy ish over here, then the, this side of my body has to fight hard to make sure, like I said, I don't tip over. So that's the beauty of that. 
Um, up next, I'm going to show you a very advanced exercise um, called I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, pour me out. So <laughs> that's not that exercise. That's the, the expression I use when doing this exercise. It's called a windmill, and what you're going to do is basically get in, let show the stand first. Hopefully you can see this, so I'm going to get a nice regular, a mm, little wider than a spotless stand. I'm going to kind of point my toes, one full 90, and then the other one about 45. For the first version, I'm going to have my hand on the inside of my thigh. I'm going to reach down, keeping my shoulder, excuse me, my hand above my shoulder, and the bell below the other shoulder, and then using my hips, pop back up. Okay? So, remember that I'm a little teapot? That's what I'm doing. Okay? Now, here's that version one. Version two, boom, and boom. Okay? Going up above. Right? So, very different. I'm a little teapot. Something like that. Okay? And then the other side. I'm a little closer. You can see the butt. You can kind of see the hips. Right? Shaking the side. Okay, using my back. Okay? Very different motion. Very different. Very difficult um, to master that motion. But that, that is one of the exercises that I love, love, love. Okay. Now, so that's windmills, that's squats. I'm going to show you a different version of a windmill in a second. Uh, and not, maybe not the windmill, maybe a get up. Uh, but I want to go back to the squat. So one of the things that's cool about the squats is when squatting, everybody wants to like, you know, done it for a couple of weeks, so like, or just something else. Or if you're at home watching this and working out, well, I only have my one size bell. You can probably make these more interesting. So what you're going to do, we call these alternating squats. Okay? So from here, we're going to basically switch hands. So pop up. Okay. From the side. Okay. Just like that. So I like alternating squats for runners, cyclists, anybody that has to do repetitive. That okay. Um, you're really going to feel the burn right there. In addition to it being safe for the back, right? So. That's why I love that exercise. Okay, um, let's see, what's next? Let's go over the uh, next version of the kettlebell windmill slash close cousin to the windmill, which is called the get down. Okay, I think that's a, oh, I slipped the slide, so get down. Oh, that trick daddy or something like that. Okay, I'm gonna bring the kettlebell over my head. I'm gonna go in an overhead carry position. I'm gonna go into a reverse lunge. Okay, from here, I'm going to pivot, I'm going to reach down my hand, pause, back up, and back up, from the front. Okay, reverse lunge, for some people by the way, just go back up, that's hard enough. Second, pivot, back foot, keep my eyes on the prize, shoulder blade engaged, back up, stand up. Okay. Very different motion. Okay, on the other side. Okay, reverse lunge first. For some people, that's enough. For others, you're going to want to add a little bit more. Reverse lunge. Here's the windmill. Right, right there. That's like the close cousin. Back up. Stand up. Okay, call this the get down. All right, that's the get down. Notice we don't go all the way down. Start at the top. Work our way. Sometimes it's known as the top half. Turkish get up, but uh, very close cousins to the windmill. They really can the Turkish get up, obviously, but they really work well together uh, in the sequence. So that's the start. Um, let's see. In addition, we're going to go over uh, the next level. How I've been getting the kettlebell up is called a snatch. Anytime you're going from the low position all the way above the head, that's, a, that's the best way, fastest way to do it there. We're going to go with a precursor for that. This is the one on high pull, okay? So what you're going to do is basically pull a bucket of water out of a well. If you don't know what a well is, well, all right. So here, coming straight up, I'll show you both sides. Okay, switching. Let's show you, yeah, this side. 
Okay, so from the side. Okay, just like that. Okay, so very different motion, right? You see how that is the leg driven motion with the upper um, hand, upper body guiding it? That's all it is. But what you're going to do though, more importantly, is transition that from the legs to the upper body. Because if you can stop here, that's, that's not necessarily the same motion. Um, who else said hi? Oh, hi, Jody. Hi, Kyle. What's up, Zeph? Um, so with this though, we're going to keep it popping. So here we go. Um, we're going to go to one high pull and then one snatch. Okay, so you're just not going to stop. Same motion, just get it to the back of your wrist. Here. One. Now, this is every type of snatch. I'm going to go over again to the side. Bring it right back down. One high pull. Okay, much more rectilinear. This is a super advanced topic, but there are different types of high pulls and different types of snatches. Okay, uh, one is called rectilinear the one I just did, and that is the simplest one to teach people to snatch, in my opinion, because it's nothing to do with the dumbbell. Most people, when they learn to snatch, they're like, ow, oh, this hurts my wrist. All right, well, let's break it down. Let's do the dumbbell first, teach you used to the patterning, and then we'll teach you the flicking of the wrist. What I mean by the flicking of the wrist, watch this. So for most people, even on the clean, okay, I'll slow it down, but for most people, going one, sorry, one high pull, one, Right, that's going to be very difficult to get. So what I want you to do is to learn about this elbow. If I can go in slow motion, what you're going to see is that this elbow drops. When this elbow drops, the bell is still driving up and thereby going around this as a fulcrum. Mom, I'm doing physics right now, you'd be so proud. So coming up, the bell was going up in this straight line, but now I'm pulling it, it's going to turn and then end up on my wrist without doing this huge big circular motion and instead we're changing the path of the kettlebell thereby placing on the back of the wrist nice and gently. It's like a tooth on a pillow. So here's what it looks like. Okay? Here, watch the elbow. See that little flick? Can't slow it down for you right now. But here let's try it again. Boom. That was better. Right? So you see how I kind of get the elbow and the wrist underneath the bell? I use all the momentum from my legs generated through it. Okay? to get that bell above my head. Okay, check the side. One. Right, see that elbow come underneath? One. Okay, I'm exaggerating it by a lot. So ideally, no, well, maybe not, but just it's a quick motion, right? So when you're getting that kettlebell in these high positions, that's what you're looking for. Okay, um, let's break it down into the versions that I mentioned before, rectilinear versus curvilinear. So curvilinear, you know, this is where when we're like, oh, let's do kettlebell swings. This is where the swing pattern comes into play, okay? So what you're gonna do, you're gonna go a swing pattern and you're gonna go um, basically one swing and then a snatch, okay? So the, the swing pattern kind of um, climbs your, your body and your mind for the, the snatch because you're gonna come out and then that same path, see how it's a little bit more circular? Okay, that's why curvilinear versus rectilinear, right? Okay, coming out, and we're just gonna let it keep going and then punch it to the top, okay? So here's our snatch after the first swing. The hip, one swing, one swing, right? And for a lot of people, they'll be like, well, that looks a lot easier. Here's you, right? So you see how it, it's a little bit seamless as far as the tra transition is concerned, a little bit more seamless than the other one. Doesn't mean that the other one's wrong. Like I said, I think it's actually easier to learn the rectilinear first, because then it translates very well from the dumbbell to kettlebell, and then you just teach the curvilinear. But for some people, like I said, I don't get this. So you, as long as you have, as a trainer, as long as you have both tools in your toolkit, you win. As a consumer, as, a, as somebody who's like, just teach me how to do this dance, dude. Both ways can work. Try both. Whatever one feels more comfortable, that's for your way. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. I wanted to get this to you. Uh, I've been thinking about kettlebells lately and getting kettlebells in your hands as much as possible. Doesn't matter what color, doesn't matter what size, just get them in your hands. And so that's what it is. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.